Hey y'all, um, I'm just gonna throw this out here and I'm probably never gonna talk about it again. Um, I had something happen over the weekend. It was very scary. I can't go into detail about it. I'm not home. I was supposed to move. That got delayed for an unrelated reason. So this is my current empty um, place, my emergency empty apartment. The lighting is really bad. Everything about this is really bad. The echo is going to be horrendous. But we're just gonna proceed like everything's fucking normal because I'm back and I have more Glitch in the Matrix stories that I'm so excited to read. This is a continuation of the last video because the article that I picked out had like a hundred stories in it so I can probably get four videos out of it if not more. I'm gonna hop into it because I need the distraction and I, I genuinely love these stories. I'm gonna try not to talk too loud so the echo's not so bad. When I tell you this place is fucking empty, I mean it. I have a couch and a mattress on the floor. So we're on 25. This says, we were in the same vicinity without realizing it. When I was little, six years old, my parents took us to Disneyland in Florida. We went to go watch one of those shows with the parents. During the middle, I had to go to the bathroom, so my mom took me and left my dad and my sister to watch the show. When we came back, the entire stadium was empty, so we thought the show ended and we went back to the bathroom area to find my dad, thinking that's where he must have taken my sister since it's the only bathroom station in the area. Sat on the bench, waited for two hours before my mom gave up. This was pre-cell phone. The only remarkable thing during this time was that one of those iguana lizard things was fighting a squirrel behind the bench and I watched with great joy. I actually remember this. Did some other stuff, then went back to the hotel room to wait for them. The entire time my mom was so annoyed at my dad saying it's so irresponsible of him. A few hours after we got back to the hotel room, my dad and my sister, who's a year younger than me, came back and obviously they started arguing, both saying they were waiting for the other at the bathroom. Me and my sister, on the other hand, started telling each other about the lizard and squirrel we saw fighting. Apparently, both of us saw what happened from the same vantage point on that bench. Williams is using the litter box, and it's you can hear everything in this apartment. So I'm gonna wait a second. My parents stopped to listen to us and asked us to clarify. We both saw the same lizard, same squirrel fighting from the same point on the bench. It was one of those inexplicable occurrences, but they didn't give it further thought until me and my sister brought up the Remember that time we saw the lizard and squirrel fight and my mom was like, yeah, that was a weird day. I just don't even understand how you were on, you were at the same place, but you were like in a different time, time zone or something. Oh wait, wait, I guess I skipped 25 because I've read some of these past it. I think it was just longer, so I skipped it because I was getting towards the end of the video. What are the short ones? Okay, 31, I guess is where we stopped. Just stopping for gas. My boyfriend told me this once and his sister and mom confirm it. He was driving through Texas on his way to visit relatives. It's dead of night on a tone lane highway in the middle of nowhere, hasn't passed a gas station in a while and his tank was getting low, so decided to fill up at the next available station. After a while, he rolls into a small town. There's a lit up diner on the right and local gas station on the left. All the lights are on and cars filling up, so he figures the place is open. It seems to be exceptionally busy for this time of night, but he really needs gas, so decides to wait in line to fill up. There's only two cars ahead of him, so it shouldn't take that long. At this point, his sister wakes up in the back seat. What's well, taking so long? It's been like 10 minutes and not one car has moved. Then all of a sudden his sister blurts out, none of the people are moving. Sure enough, the people waiting in the cars, the people filling up, the cashier and people in the convenience store, none of them had moved since they pulled up to the station. His heart is racing at this point, but he pulls up to get a closer look. Sure enough, every single person at this gas station is a mannequin. Basically they peeled out of there and never looked back. I wish they had taken pictures because I would have loved to see it. No, that just gave me like the chills. That's terrifying because why? And it seems like it's like a, I don't, dude, I don't know. I'm thinking of something really sinister. We're going to move past it because I really don't like that one. Voices in the wilderness, which I'm also not going to like this one. I'm from Finland and that's also where the things I'm about to describe to you happened. This was some years ago, pre-cell phone GPS era. It was the end of summer and myself and two friends were on a camping trip way up north in Lapland. Mosquito season was over and the weather was cooling down in anticipation of the coming fall. The three of us had packed food and gear for a 10 day trek. The car we arrived in had been left at the parking lot of a visitor center. This happened within the premise of the, I'm not gonna be able to say this, Urho Kekanon uh, National Park. I don't know why that was the part I was like, uh, uh, National Park. A 985 square mile stretch of wilderness near the Russian border. The terrain there varies greatly from treeless and semi-mountainous to dense forest of spruce and pine and dwarf birch. There are lots of swamps. Seeing reindeer is not uncommon and some nights you might hear wolves in the distance. You can run into a bear or a wolverine in this place, but of course normally they avoid people. We mostly camp in a tent, but some nights we use shelter in simple huts provided for travelers free of charge. 
The trip had lasted five days. We were at the furthest of any kind of civilization we were going to be on the particular outing. Truly in the middle of nowhere, there, there really is nothing there. There are no villages, towns, or industry. The place is a national park after all. Seeing other hikers happen from time to time, you'd see some people in the distance maybe. Very rarely would you come face to face with anyone. So in the middle of our trip, we were camped in a small clearing, woodland extending around us for a considerable distance in all directions. It was already dark, we had eaten our evening meal, and all three of us were jammed in our only tent. It was a bit cramped, but we fit. We took turns carrying it during the hikes. We're exchanging some jokes and crude humor in the dark, like guys in their 20s do, and about to sleep in our sleeping bags. When we quieted down, we began to hear it, talking, and the sound of machinery. Given our location, this was profoundly weird. We camped in a tent because there were no huts nearby. Uh, maybe there was another camp somewhere near us? We couldn't quite make out what was being said, but it was a human voice, no doubt about it. But nothing really could explain the sound of heavy machinery. It sounded like an excavator or a tank, something big, powerful, and really not too far away. Combined with the sound of talking, we thought construction yard, but at that time of night, in an unpopulated, protected nature reserve? We got out of our tent, it was cold and pitch black, the campfire had some coals still glowing, we took out our flashlights. My two buddies have always been a lot braver than me. The sound was clearly coming from the north, maybe half a kilometer away. I wish I knew what that meant. We thought the construction might be going on behind a small hill some distance away. We could see no lights or anything. We still could not make out what was being said. The speaking-like voice was monotone, and it was impossible to even say what language was being used. Still sounded a lot like a person speaking, though. You may be aware of some sort of spooky phenomenon of hearing a human voice in static. Maybe you've used a blow dryer and been sure someone is talking, turn it off, and it was just something the brain tried to interpret from the steady hum. Maybe it was like that, sort of. It's hard to explain. The machinery-like sound continued, not loud, but you could sort of make out the powerful engine, at times accelerating slash adding power, and at times idle. My two friends resolved to go find out what was going on. We put our warm clothes back on, donned boots, and I sat next to the dying fire adding some more wood to it. I would stay at the camp while my buddies left to check out this mysterious construction yard in the middle of nowhere in the Lapland woods. So there I sat, the guys took out their maps, took a compass heading and left, and I could hear them make their way through the forest, see the light from their flashlights. Then they were gone. The weird sounds continued, unaltered. They were gone 15 minutes, then maybe 30, then the better part of an hour. It was odd. Judging by the volume of the sound, they should have reached it, checked it out, and been back already. I added more firewood and tried to make out what the person was saying, but it was too tinny and obscure. The guys had been away for over two hours. I figured they had stayed for coffee with the construction guys or something. Then the sound stopped. Just like that, it just ended all at the same time. The engine sound and the voice both just quit. It was silent. I waited for another 30 minutes, very worried now that something had happened, that maybe my friends were lost. Should I go try to find them? I shouted their name several times and built the fire pretty big. I was scared shitless when suddenly I saw the flashlights of my friends. Apparently they were returning in a hurry. The guys got back to camp out of breath. They told me the following. They had followed the sound beyond the small ridge in the distance. There was nothing there and it seemed like they were not getting any closer to the source of the sound. They had to stop every now and then, be quiet and listen to it to be able to walk towards it. They walked and stopped like this for some time then realized they were not getting any closer. The sounds did not change in volume at all. They decided to just go a little bit further several times when suddenly the sound just stopped like someone pressed a button on a recording. They realized they had been going on for a long time. They were in the middle of the dark woods alone. They reversed the heading and started back at a brisk pace. Eventually they saw my big ass fire from the top of a hill and found their way back. The weird thing is, we seem to think they stopped at different times. They had been gone two and a half hours in total. They said the sound stopped at around one hour, 15 minutes after they left. Then they started heading back immediately. Return trip taking a bit longer, even though they kept a good pace. They apparently wandered around a bit. For me, the sound stopped at the two hour mark just 30 minutes before they returned. We did not sleep that night. Nothing more happened on that trip and we never found out what the weird construction yard like sound was. When we returned to the park visitor center some five days later, we asked around, but no one knew of any construction going on. Been bugging me ever since. No, that's so scary because actually what? Like, it's, it's creepy to think that like somebody was trying to lure you there, but also like the sound not changing in volume no matter how far you went. How does that make any sense? Like, what was it? What was it? An odd night at the hotel. I work as a security slash nighttime attendant at an apartment building. It's 24 stories in one of the oldest buildings in the city. One night, I'm sitting here when my phone rings at 3 a.m. and I answer, hello, this is Rick at the front desk, how can I help you? 
The voice on the other end sounded female, but was totally garbled, and the only bit I could make out was 23rd floor. I tried to tell the person I couldn't understand them and ask what apartment they were in, but again, garbled response and 23rd floor. After the third time of trying to understand them and the same response, I said, since I couldn't understand that I'd come meet them in the hallway. I go to the main elevators and both are up on the, surprise, 23rd floor. Luckily, we have an older service elevator and it's only on the seventh floor, so I call it down. I get in, hit the button for the 23rd floor, but it won't move and the inner door won't close. So I go to unlock the reset panel and boom, we start going up, door's still open. I'm freaking out and the elevator is shaking because it goes pretty fast and it's old. As I'm going up, I just stay towards the back and I finally reach the 23rd floor. Wait, did the doors open? Wait, no, I, because I would jump off at the first floor I could. I step out, door closes just fine, and I look around the hallway. There's nobody around. I walk along slowly trying to listen for anyone awake who might have called, but there's nothing. So now I head the opposite direction and go towards where the regular elevators are, and when I get to them, they are just sitting there with their doors open. I was pretty freaked out, but no, it could just be the elevators on the fritz. So I get in and figure I'll just reset them when I get to floor one, when I hear the sound of the back stairwell closing. So I quickly get out and go to the stairwell, and lo and behold, no one's there, but the maintenance door to the machine room is ajar, and at the time, I'm the only one in the building with a key. At the top of the building is a large machine room housing all the really loud machinery that does stuff in the building and allows access to the roof. I don't like going into it because it's creepy as fuck and no one ever goes there. So at this point, I'm seriously freaked out, but I muster up and head in. I shout, hello? There's no response. The lights in this room flicker because they're shitty fluorescent, so I can't even see well either. But at the end of the room, I can make out the roof access door and sure as shit, it's slightly open. So I continue forward, checking the space in between each machine as I walk by, and there's no one there, so I open the roof access door. I can't see anyone ahead of me on the roof, but there's a slight wraparound, and if there was a jumper or something, I needed to be sure, so I stepped out and leave the door ajar like it was. Almost immediately, the door is pulled shut. Now, I might have written it off as wind or something, but this door is hard to shut and hard to open. Really hard. I immediately grab the handle and yank it open, slam it behind me and start running straight for the maintenance door. It automatically locks when it's closed, so I slam it shut too and go back to the 23rd floor hallway, get into an elevator, door is still open, and go all the way down to the first floor. I go back to the main lobby and as soon as I sit down, the phone rings. I pick it up, don't say a word, and sure as hell garbled voice again, only audibly saying 23rd floor. I hung up the phone turned off the ringer and spent the rest of the evening just staring at the parking garage security monitor. No, because the way the police would have been there the second I saw like anything weird. Like if I saw the maintenance store open, 911, because nobody should be able to access that and I am not checking it myself, that is not my job. The dead uncle who didn't die, I think I've read one similar to this, if I have the right idea in my head, I don't know what this is. I knew my uncle had died. My mom had called me and told me the news. It was very sad. She told me in the middle of work and I told one of my coworkers, he expressed his condolences on my loss. A couple weeks later, my sister mentioned my aunt and uncle doing something. I said, but he's dead. And my sister said, no, he isn't. I call my mom, no, he isn't dead. To this day, I'm still not sure how much of it my brain imagined and how much was real. Did I really talk to my coworker? Was I even on the phone with my mom at all that day? It still freaks me out knowing my mind could fabricate something so real, like a memory like that. No, I don't. We're moving on. The man with the dog. I just, I can't even handle that. About 10 years ago, I was walking my dog in the park. It was a nice sunny morning, lots of dew on the grass, so wherever you walked would leave a path of dark grass where the dew was knocked off the blades. It would be impossible for anyone or a dog to walk through the grass without leaving such a trail. So Mr. Dog and I are strolling along. He's ahead of me, pissing on bushes, snuffling, etc. when he stops cold. His hackles go up and he looks across the park, growling. I look to where he is staring and there's a guy with a dog about a hundred yards away near a large tree, legs moving like he's walking. Thing is, even though his legs are moving, his ground speed doesn't seem to match up with the speed of his legs, kind of like seeing someone moonwalk. Anyhow, I write it off to perspective or humidity or something and keep walking. The dog, however, won't walk with me and stays rooted to his spot, making his high-pitched whine. I walk back to the dog and look over to where the guy was and he's still in just about the same spot, still moving funny. So I decide to check out this odd walking dude. I hook up the dog to the leash and we start walking across the wet grass to where he is, thinking our dogs might play together. My dog is not happy. He's clinging to my left leg like a Velcro as we make our way across the field. As we progress, I notice that it appears the guy's actually walking away from me, as I don't seem to be gaining on him. 
At this point, I still don't think anything is odd until I get to the place where I first saw him, the large tree. I look down at the ground and I see this almost perfect circle about 10 feet in diameter of dry, dew-free grass. Thing is, there are no footprints leading to or from this circle. The dog, on the other hand, is flipping his shit and is looking at where we just came from. I look up and see that guy isn't ahead of me anymore. He is back on the other side of the grassy field and is standing just about where I was standing when I first saw him. He has a dog. He's staring at me. He hooks his dog to the leash and starts walking towards us. Needless to say, I freaked out when we cut sideways out of the park and down to a populated street. I kept looking back but didn't see him or his dog again. That, so it was you coming at you? After telling the story to a couple of friends of mine, they speculated there was some kind of refraction of light or optical illusion which gave me the impression I was seeing another person but I was actually seeing myself reflected in mist or fog or something. But I think I just saw a time warp of myself walking my dog one day and tried to chase it. That's exactly what I was thinking, like, because that doesn't even make sense for you to, like, look back and see yourself doing the exact same thing and for it to be fog. No, I believe you. That is so weird and really scary. I'm going to read a couple more. A life-saving bad dream. One night I had a dream of my mom and I dying in a bomb blast. It was terrifying and I was sweating like a madman. Anyway, the next day my mom and I went to this marketplace to get some of her fabric tailored. It was probably 3.30 in the afternoon when suddenly I get a stomach ache. I started to cry and whine about how bad my stomach was hurting. My mom finally gave up with my whining and took me back home. Back home, I was suddenly feeling okay and went out to play with my friends. My mom thought I was probably pretending to be sick just to play with my friends, but when I returned, she hugged me tightly and started to cry. A bomb had been detonated in the same marketplace we were in one hour ago. And the freakiest thing is that my mom tells me to this day that she believes I actually saw the man who placed the bomb and started to cry, but I don't really remember Oh my god. I have I actually have no words for that. Oh my god. Okay, a call from a friend. I was a total idealist back in high school, so when choosing a college, I chose to go somewhere none of my friends were attending so I could strike out on my own in a finding myself sort of way. Well, I ended up making a few really close friends my first semester. I mean, these guys became like family to me in a matter of months. One day during winter break, one of those guys, my buddy Kimbo, had gone back home to visit family and friends. And on his return trip to our college, he hit a bad patch of ice and got into a car accident and was killed. It hurt like a son of a bitch for a long time, and I still think about him all the time, but... Anyways, a few weeks after Kimbo's accident, me and the rest of the guys were getting back from a party off campus, and we were standing outside of our dorm building smoking a cig. I felt my phone vibrate when I pulled it out, and I saw that I was getting a call from Kimbo's phone. Dumbfounded, I showed my friends the phone quickly and then answered. When I picked up, it just went directly to his voicemail, which played the same message it always had. It never happened again and we never really talked about it, but for me it was one of those someone's looking after me moments. I hadn't been doing very well after his death, but seeing his name show up on my cell phone screen one final time made me feel a whole lot better for a time and really helped me get out of the slump I was in. I have no idea how his phone could have possibly called me and I doubt I will ever, but this was one of those glitch in the matrixes that I'll forever be thankful for. Rest in peace, Kim, but feel free to call again. That makes me like, that, like I have like tears in my eyes. It makes me like literally want to cry. We're gonna read one more. This says into the future. When I was a teenager, I had two really intense dreams one night. The first one was about an online friend of mine calling me to say she had broken up with her boyfriend and I sang a few lines of seals, don't cry to her over the phone. The second dream was finding a real life friend's dead body floating in her bathtub. I didn't think anything of it until I logged online that evening and the online friend came online to tell me her boyfriend broke up with her. I don't wanna know if the next story, I don't wanna know if the second dream is real. I immediately asked her if I could call her and she said no. I remember thinking that it meant something like I could change it. Not long after my phone rang and it was my real life friend from the dream calling me. I was completely freaked out at this point but just talked to her normally. She was just talking about school and shit, up until I realized I heard a splash in the background. I asked her, are you in the tub? And when she said yes, I felt like my heart had stopped. I asked her, what did you do? She didn't answer me right away, and then after a very long pause, she told me she had taken an entire bottle of pills and chased it with mushrooms and vodka. She had gotten scared waiting for it to hit her, so she called me so she could hear someone's voice. I hung up and I called 911. By the time they got to her, she was unconscious but alive. Today, she's a mom to a beautiful little girl and she's okay. What the, how, no, but actually how, like, I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you were there. I'm, and I'm weirdly glad you had a dream that like made you realize what was going on because literally what, what? Oh my God. 
Well, that is all I'm gonna read for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm really praying. I was trying to read like quietly and I hope that that didn't like ruin either one, the vibe of the video or two, like I hope the echo isn't so unbearable. I'm really sorry. It should only be like this for like a couple of weeks. But if you guys have any weird glitch in the matrix stories you wanna share with me or the community, I'll have my separate link down below. I'm gonna go, there will not be any rambling at the end of this because the only thing I have to tell you guys about is something I cannot tell you about, yeah, I can't tell you about. Right. So I'm gonna go, but I love you guys. Um, I do want to say though really quickly, like, I sorry if I like freaked out at the beginning. I don't even remember what I said or like how I said it. I'm safe and I'm fine. Uh, I just am going to be in like a weird situation for a little bit, but it's okay. But I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye.